is like, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, it's like, like oh, once you get started, because then you have these questions are just always popping to my head, and I'm like, and then, like, once you get like started, and then like, a lot of the time is like, you think about it in bed a lot. Well, yeah, that's what I do a lot, and then like. And but you might have something to force you to stop, though. If you yeah, really can't that's stop. really because yes. some people, like philosophers, have gone insane thinking on one <laughs> question. Just going. One of the basic tenets of philosopher children is that we're all philosophers. That it's something we do naturally. You know, young people are kind of more game to try stuff out. If you want to just explore something in a more open-ended way, I think they're they're more comfortable with it. In many ways, working with college students is no different than working with, you know, second graders. They're just bigger. <laughs> I think one of the challenges in this work is that adults really underestimate children's capacities in general and children's capacities to engage in deep thinking and questioning in particular. Philosophy kind of helps me think of like everyday things. I might run into thinking something and then I kind of get sidetracked thinking and digging like really deep and like um, about that one thing that I just saw and it kind of, so I kind of like do philosophy um, or think philosophy, well, philosophically um, other than in school. We as adults don't give, enough, don't give our kids enough credit that they are just these little brilliant minds and they don't want to be stuck in this whole like, oh, I'm eight years old, I can't think this way, I can't have these ideas. But if you open the door to that, it's incredible. So I think for me as a teacher is taking a step back and appreciating that these, you know, eight and nine year olds, they just are a sponge. Yeah, I think it really helps with decision making because if you have like, like a huge decision before you, like you have to think of like, okay, so what are the reasons I should do this? And what are the reasons I should do this? And which reasons are better? I was thinking like, uh, what would make something the best? Was it like, if it had the most color? Just why would something, or why would, like, why would something be the best? And why would everyone take, or, and would everyone take something as the best? If there's one, only one person on this earth to decide it, then there would be only one best. But if everybody was deciding the best, there wouldn't be. There pretty much wouldn't be the best. I think it's important that the kids really ask these questions and are interested in them and care about them. And if we treat them seriously and as an appropriate topic for conversation in school, we show them that they matter and that they're onto something, right, that matters. But we ask them to give reasons for what they're saying, right? Why would you think that? That's interesting. I would never have thought that way. Or I don't see that as being related to what we just said, right? How do you see it as being related? So it challenges them, but it also empowers them to say, we're listening, right? We think what you're thinking about matters. And they rise to that challenge a lot. I'm always really struck by the number of students that I have who stay after a class, who have all of these really amazing philosophical ideas, and it's almost like the floodgates have been opened, and like they have someone to talk to about like these really complex issues. It's kind of an outlet for those big ideas that students they don't always have an outlet for because people are too busy to talk about them, don't feel comfortable talking about them. You don't think he would lie. So you think he was telling Harry the truth. So does that mean that his deepest desire is to have a pair of socks? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he needs another pair of socks, but it might be one of his desires, but not his deepest desire. There are so much other things you could um, wish for, or you could... And compared to a pair of socks, that wouldn't really be good off. Can't you just buy new socks? I would get if you wanted something like to climb the Grand Canyon and have a sense of accomplishment, or get muscular to prove people wrong. But usually it's something important to you, but, but you can't accomplish, because I mean, if you just if you got your deepest desire, it's not going to be desired anymore because you don't desire stuff you have. Okay. I disagree with Gabe and John because maybe he has everything else except for a pair of socks. He doesn't. 
Yeah, I agree with John. Like, um, Harry Potter, he can't just zap up his parents, can't he? It's interesting to see how the kids develop, right, when they've had it, not as a regular, you know, everyday class, but at least once a week, through their whole elementary career. So I think they start to learn these skills and recognize philosophical issues much more easily in the stories that they read or in the other things that they do in their classes. So part of the work I do at the center is to work with the University of Washington graduate students and undergraduate students, helping them learn how to facilitate philosophical inquiry in the classroom with kids from kindergarten through um, older students in high school. We teach a class each quarter that gives students strategies and practice about ways to facilitate a discussion, a philosophical discussion, and then we send them into the schools with mentors and eventually then our, those students are able to carry on these kinds of sessions themselves. I first got introduced to the program when I took the class that they offer at UW and that was just such an incredible experience. Everyone in the classroom felt comfortable enough to participate. It was so collaborative and thought-provoking and it really created an environment where you felt comfortable to learn and comfortable to share your opinions and to have opinions. Bringing the college students into schools, especially schools like Muir, where many of the students would be first-generation college students, they don't have a tradition of higher education in their families, and they get to see college students come into the classroom and participate with them. It's really powerful. It's really powerful for the college students and the, you know, the elementary school students. I disagree with John. Because you don't need to always change your desire. What, what about if you do get it? Then I would be happy and I but wouldn't need another desire because it would be my deepest. Maybe you want to do a deeper desire and just help, help. You, want, you want to do another thing. Right, so if you have your deepest de desire, if it changes, is it, if you have all your stuff, are you still going to want more? Like, it seems to me, like, let's say I want an Xbox for Christmas. Um, and then, um, and then that's my desire. I get an Xbox for Christmas. Then, then I want an iPad. Are you ever gonna stop wanting, or are you just gonna be um, happy what you have? Because it seems like everybody wants more. Like they're happy what they have, but they want even more of something. I think that well, if your um, if your um, deepest destiny um, has happened or uh, has happened, do you need another one or do you not? I think being part of this program has not only influenced me as an educator, but also my thoughts on what education should or could look like. My own education background kind of inspired me to create some kind of change in the education system especially in India because that's where I'm from and the kind of systems that we worked in encouraged a lot of control, encouraged a lot of um, categorical boxed ways of thinking and I think I wanted to find a way to kind of break that and philosophy was a really really great tool to question that and to kind of turn that on its head. We have three fellow graduate fellowships in philosophy for children, so we have three graduate students who are either from the Department of Philosophy or the College of Education who work with us all year to build the program and to serve as mentors and, and work in the schools and other capacities. This work has taught me overall is that we assume that kids aren't capable of having these type of conversations or that maybe it will be very personal, will get really heated. They tend to be even though there might be um, disagreement, they tend to be really respectful about it and very constructive. I'm just wondering, like, how are we going to be able to talk about this because everybody believes different things? One time everybody disagreed except for like one person. Yeah. <laughs> everybody disagreed except for like one person and you got to kind of hear their point of view. Oh, that's it's really incredible. interesting yeah, to see. Like, why she thought that, so I thought I got to know her in a different way. For me, it's been really, it's
it's just been really fun to see his eyes open up, but he will just come home and he just, he wants to reenact the whole room and how, and then so-and-so said this, and then I hadn't thought about that. And actually they'll talk about it with each other, which has been, I think, a huge, um, I don't I don't ever sort of really see them talking about fractions with each other. Well, I think the, well, I'm going, kind of going back to the mind and the brain thing. I, I agree with Lucy, the mind is, isn't really physical. Like your thoughts. Yeah, and, and the, the brain is the actual physical. And the, it's like kind the of brain like, generates your thoughts and the mind, it's, it's not like mental, it is what physical. If your, it, what if your mind is just a term for a part of your brain? I think it's kind of like your soul. Like, it's, it's not actually like part of you. It's inside of you, but it's mental. So I think it's kind of a mental thought. I always talk about their philosophical antenna, um, their ability to to read something. You know, we read kids' books. Um, their ability to sort of pull out interesting philosophical questions from the texts gets better. I think sometimes picture books have more philosophical questions than adult books because they're trying to teach little kids morals. Picture books, of all things, like you would expect like only adult books to have philosophy in them, but picture books, they don't have that many words in them, while like adult books, they have a ton of words in them and they describe like every single thing so much. But picture books, there's less words and so you can you like can have more chase. room. I, I hear students say things like, you know, I see that you can think about these questions in all kinds of different ways. And I think that in our world today, learning that there are many ways to see the world and that all of them are valuable and that disagreeing with someone doesn't mean that one of you has to be right and one of you has to be wrong is really important. There's no, like, two sides, just yes and no. Like, uh, this person has this idea, this person has this idea, and what I do, it do I have, and it's kind of interesting to, like, collaborate and compare everything. And also, your mind changes, like, really quickly when you're thinking about um, philosophical things, because, like, um, you, you might be thinking one thing, and then you hear some other people's um, ideas, and then you're like, oh, wait, like, maybe it's that kids who might be on that traditional academic spectrum of needing a lot of support are sharing really thoughtful and strong ideas here mm -hmm. and they're gaining that respect and they're gaining that confidence which transfers to what they've been told they're not good at mm -hmm. in class and they can bring them like, no I, I'm good at thinking for myself and making making decisions and choices and um, being analytical. Anyone who's ever talked to a child or who's ever been a child knows that we wonder a lot when we're children. Not to say that adults don't wonder, but in fact I think if you spend time wondering with children as an adult, you remind yourself how important it is to wonder. It, it, was pro it could be possible. I mean, I mean, some, I mean, many, a lot of things are possible, like a lot more things than we think.